Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu and I'm back with another Digimon video, so today I'm going to be talking about pre-releases. Again. So pre-releases is that magical time of the year where a new set is about to come out and we could play with some of the new cards and experiment with what some of the new cards are going to be doing and have, well, a slightly different experience than what Digimon usually offers. So what a pre-release uh, basically is, is you're going to walk into your store, you're going to buy six packs uh, of the newest set, and then you're going to make a 40 card deck with a uh, Digi-Ed deck of zero to five cards. And well, you're just going to open up those packs and build with what you pull. So it's a very interesting format for Digimon, but unfortunately Digimon isn't necessarily designed for this type of play, and it kind of shows in its set design. But that's a completely different topic, and what pre-release is basically doing is that the round format is going to be Swiss format, so the more you win, the stronger your opponents will be, supposedly, and then your sideboard is going to be cards that, that uh, you pulled, and you could swap in and out between those cards that you pulled with what you had in your deck. And then you get to keep all of the cards that, that you open because, well, you opened them, you bought them. And then the only special rule is that, that uh, the sealed format players can ignore Digivolution or color requirements. So you could basically Digivolve on top of any color and ignore that. But the exception is if a card is referring to a specific color or needs a specific color, then you have to abide by what the card says. So in order to use options, you still need to have a Digimon of the same color on the field. And if a Digimon is referring to, let's just say, red, then you have to have a red card for it to interact with. So that's the big difference, but outside of that, it's just your normal game of Digimon. So the important thing to understand when going into a limited or sealed environment is just knowing and understanding the pool of cards and how they want to be played and all of their interactions. Granted, sometimes you can't necessarily rely super heavily on a lot of their more specific interactions just because uh, what you pull is out of your control and that's just the RNG or fun aspect is that RNG just acts as a great equalizer. So looking and understanding at what all of these cards are doing is just a very important thing to do so that way you could properly properly evaluate and uh, pick the cards that best support what the set is not only trying to do, but the cards that you're pulling and playing with are allowing you to do. So in Magic, we have an acronym called BREAD. So B stands for bombs. These are basically your big high-end cards, the cards that you have lots of impact, and that will help close the game as quickly as they possibly can. Then you have uh, R for removal. These are the cards that are going to be acting as removal to interact with your opponent's uh, field, so that way you could try to mitigate what they're trying to doing. Then E stands for evasion. In Digimon, this basically means your defensive cards. Cards. So it's just cards to help stall out the opponent. Most of the time, this is going to be your blockers and uh, various other defensive uh, tools that just stop the opponent from wanting to aggress. Then you have uh, A for aggro. So these are your lower curve or low to the ground cards that just want to hit as quickly as uh, they possibly can, just to try to close out the game as quickly as you can that way. So these are the cards that also just want to gain you lots of value the turn that you play them. And then D stands for duds. These are the cards that you never want to pick or play just because they're not really doing much or they're really hard to use just because, well, they're requiring more specific synergies that you might not be able to line up. Most of the time when it comes to evaluating the overall card pool, you're going to want to look at everything that is rare and below just because even though the SRs are usually very, very powerful cards, they're going to be the cards that you're not going to be seeing very often just because, well, they're higher rarity. Same thing with the secret rares. You just want to prioritize looking at the uh, lower end cards in terms of rarity so that way you could uh, try to best figure out what synergizes very nicely with each other on top of what cards you actually want to be using and can use based on what you pull. So in terms of what the set is doing as a whole, it's a, well, really interesting set just because it's a very powerful set. But the big difference between this set versus all of the other sets in terms of pre-releases and some of the advice in my other videos is the distinct lack of blockers. So this set literally has three blockers in it. That's it. And almost all of the blockers, in fact, all of the blockers are level 5 and higher, so they're going to be relatively hard to get up into, rewarding basically anyone who's playing a low-to-the-ground strategy to try to basically just create this interesting damage race against the opponent. So with that in mind, uh, the blockers that we do have are going to be Skull Mammoth Bond, which again is a level 6 blocker, a little bit hard to get into, but once it's out, it's going to be a very devastating 
card up for the opponent to deal with, just because, well, it's a high-level blocker, so it can block a lot of Digimon. Then one of the other blockers that, that we have to be working with is going to be Gundramon, so this is probably the best blocker that you could be playing, just because he's also acting as some solid removal, which is usually a very, very good thing to be doing, just because removal is very important to try to mitigate what the opponent is trying to do, on top of him actually being a solid wall to stop the opponent from actually aggressing. And then on top of that, the last uh, blocker is a temporary blocker in the form of Rebellimon. So Rebellimon just is a blocker for the turn, and then after that turn, he's basically no longer a blocker, so he's kind of eh. But uh, regardless, uh, those are just all of the blockers of the set. If you are lucky enough to pull lots of Sistermons, then I guess you could consider Sistermon Blanc to be a blocker, but she's not actually really being a blocker, because if you don't have uh, the cards that allow her to actually be a blocker, then, well, the ability doesn't really do anything. But in terms of, like, overall cards that you want to prioritize in the set, usually the best thing to do for this type of pool is just go as low to the ground as you humanly possibly can. So... Playing all of your 3s and 4s just will help make your plays as efficient and powerful as you possibly can, so that way you could try to aggress as quickly and easily as you possibly can, creating a very solid damage race type strategy. Outside of that, the other thing that you could do is just play the high tempo efficiency cards, where they just are very powerful cards to be playing that uh, have a relatively low evo cost or low play cost. So these are cards uh, like uh, Pajiamon where he just has a uh, low play cost as a level 5, so that way you could get into your level 6s as easily as you possibly can, and if the opponent doesn't have any removal, then the card just becomes that much better, allowing you to actually utilize your level 6s just as efficiently as the opponent could utilize their low-end cards. So uh, there's just a whole bunch of these really valuable and efficient cards to be playing. So in yellow, you have something like Mimicmon, where if you're at a certain threshold, then he'll gain the memory back, making it easy to play him for basically just a reduced cost, Cost, and that allows you to not only just spawn higher level Digimon faster, but allow you to Evo into your higher level Digimon, making them somewhat usable, even though the majority of them are going to be hard to use, just because everything wants to be low to the ground, because there's very little blockers to stop you. Then you do have other cards uh, like uh, Parasauromon. So this is just another very tempo efficient level 4 to be playing just because you could hard drop him for 3 as a level 4 with 5000 DP which is just a pretty good to be playing overall. And then on the reverse spectrum you have something like a Tropiamon where it's just a very powerful level 5 to be playing with allowing you to go into your level 6 as easily and efficiently as you possibly can with a really good upside to doing so. So the other big aspect of uh, what you want to be prioritizing in the set is going to be removal based Digimon. So these are the Digimon that actually have very solid removal effects or could lead to the opponent's Digimon being deleted. So Tropiamon is another really great example of a card that you want to be playing just because uh, if you are going into your higher level Digimon with this card then he could suspend the opponent's uh, Digimon when you're attacking and then if you have other Digimon on the field they could delete the opponent's Digimon before they might even be able to act just because they might be trying to hard play their Digimon and try to get as much value off of them as they possibly can just because again there's very little blockers in the set. So this is what makes uh, playing something like a Gundramon insanely valuable just because, well, he is a, one of the few blockers in the set and he has a removal-based ability where you don't necessarily have to utilize uh, the uh, options if you don't feel like you need to. I think options and tamers are still relatively hard to use. Options can come in some very clutch situations, but uh, them needing to have a specific color on the field for the majority of them, it just makes them that much harder to use. So uh, using your Digimon to act as the removal is usually a better and safer bet. And again, if you're just going to be playing a card on the field, why are you paying for four for a uh, Tamer when you could pay four for a Digimon and try to actually push the aggression and push for the game? So there's just like that kind of ebb and flow where you don't necessarily have the time to actually be able to play those types of cards, which makes playing cards like Gundramon and other removal-based Digimon that much more valuable just because, well, they do the same thing that an option does. They Sure, they might require some setup, but the fact that they still can try to delete and interact with the opponent's board makes them very, very valuable. And for the most part, this is just going to be a hardcore, like, damage race type set. There's going to be lots of very interesting things that you could try to do and try to set up, but we do have to understand that certain cards' abilities just are almost never going to be useful. So something like Arbormon, we have zero green tamers in the set, so this card's ability basically is useless, and he's just a vanilla card. So why would I play something like an Arbormon when I could play something a little bit more efficient, like a Parasaramon, unless uh, I have nothing else to play? 
but at that point I might as well just play a Petal Dramon just because uh, he has the piercing ability, so like that just all goes into card evaluation, is like what should I be prioritizing based on what I have. So as far as the level 6s that you actually want to be prioritizing, there's not necessarily a whole lot that you actually really would care about. So the big ones are going to be obviously the blockers, so Skull Mammothmon is good just because he's going to be a blocker that you could use. Then you also have Gundramon because he's also going to be a blocker, and then uh, with Gundramon you also have some really good uh, megas that can also help remove uh, some of the opponent's Digimon on these low rarities. So Gundramon being another one that could remove the opponent's Digimon on top of being a blocker makes him an absolutely primo card to be playing around with uh, for this uh, type of environment. And then we also have something like Magna Kidmon where he also has a really good ability to just try to help us delete the opponent's Digimon, on top of him being able to have security attack plus one to try to help close out the game as quickly as we possibly can because the opponent might not be playing a whole lot of level sixes. So that's making them really, really good. On top of which, another absolutely fantastic uh, level six to be playing around with is going to be Ancient Troymon because we do have some hybrid synergy in the set and we also do have some 10 warrior support in the set. On top of the fact that he has a very powerful defensive ability that's almost always going to be triggering just because of how few blockers there are going to be in the set. And then the only other card that I would kind of recommend is going to be Ornismon just because Ornismon is more of a situationally good card where if the opponent doesn't have a whole lot of cards in their hand, then slamming down an Ornismon to try to act as some removal and some solid pressure for the opponent just is really, really solid, but that's like the only situation I'd play him with. You're not necessarily going to try to use Marmacusmon to play him for free like you normally would in a constructed environment just because you might not have the cards to do so. So those are going to be the more primo level sixes that you want to be using, and everything else is kind of just eh. It's not like they're bad in any stretch of the word, it's just they're more situational and they're not necessarily doing a whole lot that you really would care about, versus just slamming more dudes onto the field and try to get as much value as quickly as you possibly can with, to try to close out the game as quickly as you possibly can. And then as far as options in the set go, most of the time you don't really want to run a whole lot of options just because, well, you could be playing Digimon for doing a very similar thing, and most of the time the options that you still do need to have the Digimon on the field or at least a tamer of the same color in order to use it, so it is still a little bit harder to use the options. But there are a couple of cards with the Three Musketeers cards, just because the Three Musketeers cards have options that allow you to use them disregarding their color requirements. So these become a little bit better and easier to run, but they only become better and easier to run with the Three Musketeers. If you don't have any Three Musketeers, then these cards, well, they're still just generically decent removal cards, which, you know, is never a bad thing. It's just slightly harder to actually warrant running them just because, again, you do need to have the proper color card on the field in order to use the option, and that's the big drawback where it's just like, I could play an option and try to do something, but half the time the option might actually be dead or unplayable, versus playing a Digimon where it's going to be playable almost 100% of the time. Then Tamers in this set are a little bit more awkward to use because sometimes they could actually be really, really good, and then other times they could be completely and utterly useless. So cards that are a little bit harder to set up, uh, like uh, Tai Kamiya and uh, Matt Ishida from this set, are going to be a little bit harder to use because they are more specifically tailor-made for using the Agumon and Gabumon. And, well, if you don't have those cards and you don't have the uh, bonds that they're respectively trying to play, then these are just really bad tamer cards to be running because they're not going to be doing anything. Then, as far as the duo tamers go, these are pretty okay tamers to be considered uh, to run. Just because that their memory gaining ability could actually be somewhat usable based on the different conditions. So TK and Kari have uh, the uh, ability to uh, gain you to memory if you have uh, fewer uh, security than your opponent, which is uh, pretty decent. Then uh, you have uh, Izzy and Joe, where these give you two memory for the opponent having two Digimon in play, another generically easy condition to meet. And then you also have uh, Sora and Mimi for the opponent not having a level four or lower in play, which is in this kind of a context going to be a little bit harder to do just because there's going to be so much low level Digimon running around because of the lack of blockers. So I would say the best tamers, if you had to run any, are going to be uh, TK and Kari and then Izzy and Joe. And then if you are lucky, enough to be able to uh, get enough Eosmon cards. Moena is an okay tamer to be running. She's going to be the memory fixing tamer in the entire set. She is also a white tamer, so she's not actually adding any color variety 
to be able to make your options more playable. So that's like a big drawback to actually wanting to run her, making her a little bit more awkward than some of the other tamers. On top of the fact that she is, again, just supporting Eosmon and supporting other tamers, which is something you're not really going to be wanting to do. So I would probably uh, disregard even wanting to play Moena just because, uh, similar to Matt and Ty, she's a little bit too narrow and the only ability you'd be caring about is the memory fixing one. But as a white tamer, you're locking yourself out of using certain cards and that's just not necessarily what you want to be doing in a sealed environment. But speaking of uh, Moena and Eosmon, if you do want to try to run Moena, Eosmon does support uh, what Moena wants to be doing, and same thing with Cutting Edge, so those are three cards that play very, very nicely with each other, and if you are lucky enough to get the super rare Eosmon, and you just have a deck full of the low-level Eosmons, then that's going to make it your SR Eosmon really, really strong, and I think as a whole, just the level 5 Eosmon alone is just a really good card to be running for a multitude of different reasons reasons based on the sealed environment just because we could actually digivolve into this off of any of our other colors and we could uh, use this card to digivolve into any of our other colors also so its inheritable ability actually becomes a little bit more usable on top of its when attacking ability to spawn more eosmons is just really really valuable because any way we could get free advantage is usually a really good thing for you to try to do especially in this sealed environment so if you could out tempo and outpace the opponent because you have these eosmons swinging into the opponent and spawning more Eosmons, that's just super powerful, especially when you could digivolve them into any level 6 that you're running. So here's just a quick list of uh, cards that I would probably prioritize either because of their stats or abilities, and I'm not necessarily going to be going over all of them per se, but I do think that these are just some of the stronger cards that you could be running in the set when you see them outside of the SRs and uh, secret rares, because the SRs and secret rares are, well, usually really, really powerful for a reason, because that's what makes them high rarity, and usually, depending on the ones that you have access to, you could do a lot with that card, and that card usually is going to be acting as your bomb or win condition again depending on what the other cards that you have in your pool can best support what that card is doing if it can and if it can't then well usually it's still just a solid mega to be running overall just because the majority of the srs are going to be level sixes and sevens but to kind of wrap things up, like I said, this is going to be a pretty interesting pre-release just because it's going to be a slightly different pre-release experience than all of the other sets just because of how the set is designed with fewer blockers in the game, allowing decks to have more aggressive strategies. And we even have potential for like Megazoo-esque strategies because of all of the uh, level fives that card play for five, allowing you to easily go up into your level sixes because again, there's not going to be a lot of room to actually run big removal option cards in the deck. So it could create these really interesting positions uh, that you could put your deck in where do I choose to go as low as I possibly can or do I choose to play kind of like Megazoo in level 5 Rush where I'm just using all of these different level 5s that evil for 5 to try to gain as much value off of whatever level 6 I'm going to be going into. We do have a couple of level 7s so there is that to take note of and I definitely think like there's still room for a traditional like egg it to level six uh like digivolution strategy i just don't think it's going to be as good and it's usually going to be better to try to get as much advantage out of uh, all of the other efficiency of the other cards as much as you can because there's no blockers to stop you so it's going to be a really fun and exciting set and i hope this kind of helps you prepare a little bit for the pre-release. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link, so when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook, so when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu. So giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there. And I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching, and uh, as always, uh, don't forget to, to like, uh, share, and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.